All right, hey, welcome to my build on how to make a coffin for Halloween. If you've never done this before, you have no idea what you're doing, I may mean to, so we'll find out together. So I've never built one of these either, but I'm gonna learn how to do it, and I'm gonna show you how I do it, and then you can learn from my mistakes just like I'll learn from my mistakes. So I've already screwed up one little bit piece of it, but eh, you know what? It's part of the process. That's why I bought an extra piece of plywood. <laughs> so what you're gonna need to make this coffin, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. The easiest way to do it is gonna be to use individual pine boards or whatever type of uh, common boards you can find. But uh, the way that I'm doing it is a little bit more cumbersome. On the back end, it might be a little bit easier, but um, it's a little bit more difficult because I'm using a lot of four by eight sheets of uh, plywood, three quarter inch plywood, and it's uh, they're heavy and they're and they're hard to move around pretty much. But on the other hand, you can just cut shapes out of them when you get to the top and the bottoms of the coffin, so that'll be easy. I got five of them for a coffin that I'm gonna make about six and a half feet or six and a half yeah six and a half feet uh, tall and about three feet wide. That should accommodate most people. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you get started with this is you want to go ahead and draw it out. So we'll go over here and I'll show you what I've drawn out and we'll get an idea of how we need to do things. So as you can see here, I've already drawn out my plan for how we're going to uh, make the basically the overall shape of it. Uh, obviously it's not the sides, but you need something like this, a top view, because this is how you're going to figure out how you're going to cut your sides. Because obviously when you cut your sides, you don't want the, um, the joints to be all janky and weird. I mean, maybe you do, but in this case, I don't. Uh, so what we need to figure out is essentially how we're going to make this joint right here. So it's kind of hard to see, so I'll zoom in a little. All right, and let me adjust. There we go, professionalism. Anyway, uh, so as you can see, we've got this joint right here. So this is a toe pincher type coffin, so there's a lot of strange angles. Now, you can plan this out whoever you want, do whatever you want, draw it out however you want. The key thing is figuring out your angles. So what you're going to need for this is, well, what I like to use anyway, is uh, something called an angle gauge. And basically, <coughs> it's a gauge like so, that as it opens, as I drop it, as it opens, <laughs> well, I'm backwards, okay, as it opens, you start to get the angle. So when you get to like a 90 degree angle, there you go, it's about 90 degrees. It's not perfect, but you know, I'm gonna rush with this. So uh, what we're gonna do is take our angle gauge and we're gonna figure out what this angle right here is, okay? And you know, we measure it, we just pretty much lay that on there, figure it out. And I've got about 145 degree angle on this. Now, you don't have to match exactly what uh, your drawing is. What I tend to do is use is use angles that are at whole numbers. Because when I drew this, I didn't have any particular number in mind. I just drew. So if you're you know plus or minus you know five degrees, you're fine for the most part. So what I've got is 145 degrees right here. And the way I'm going to figure this out is if you think about it, I'll kind of draw how the boards are going to look. So I'm going to draw a board which is going to be hard to see, so I'll make it as dark of a line as I can. But the board, about three quarter inch like that, and it's going to come through this way, right? And then when I do my other board, it's going to come through like this. Now, I'm trying that horribly, but you can kind of see that that joint isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, right? You can't put the two boards through each other. This isn't, you know, virtual reality or anything. So what you can do is figure out essentially what this angle is. And you do that by creating 180 degrees here, right? So follow this board out to create this 180 degrees. Now you know that this angle, doing a lot of math here, so in case you weren't, uh, in case you're not 
up to date on math, uh, well, this may not be the best time for you. But <laughs> you know that this angle right here is 145 degrees, okay? So knowing that, that, that tells me that this angle right here, because this whole thing obviously is 180, 180 minus 145 gives me a 35 degree angle. So this angle here is 35 degrees. So what I need to do is cut this board that's going to be coming this way. I need to cut it at a 35 degree angle along that way. And then this board, I'm going to cut at a 35 degree angle on the opposite side, right? Because that should be the exact same, right? Because we've extended this line, this board, if we extend it, this becomes 180. You're still using the same 145 degree angle right here. And then this angle right here will still be 35. Okay, so you're just gonna cut it sort of opposite. So what it'll end up looking like is basically, if I were to redraw this so that it makes sense, in case, you know, just for anybody that doesn't understand where I'm going with this yet, is I draw this, uh, is this board is going to actually be on the outside like this, and it will come down a 35 degree angle right there, going like that, and then this board is going to come all the way up to here and then it's going to be cut at a 35 angle like that and that way you know you have your two boards meshed up like that you don't have any weird janky angles when you put them together and they have a good solid connection and then I'll basically be able to put you know glue and uh, screws or glue and nails right through here I'll probably use I'll probably use a screw a couple screws to get these to join together but Anyway, that's pretty much how that works. So now that we have those angles, we know it's 35, uh, we can go ahead and start cutting. Now, the easiest way when you have something like this, the easiest way to cut it is gonna be with a circular saw. Now, a lot of different circular saws out there, you can do however you want, but I like the, uh, the cordless ones, as long as you got enough batteries for them, and you know, I do. But you know you want to use these cordless ones if you can because you don't get stuck anywhere, you won't get caught. The only downside to these is they don't have quite as much torque as you're going to find on a uh, corded, corded uh, uh, saw. So my advice, use a good one of these with a good size battery. I, I, I kind of like these Ryobi ones, I don't really have any problems with them. But um, if you have really thick material, you may want to use a, uh, a, wire, a corded one, this being three quarter inches, fairly thick, but you can kind of overcome that by setting your blade at the minimum height necessary to cut through that stock. If you do that, then it's not gonna bind up so much. All right, next trick I gotta show you is there's a lot of different ways to cut a straight edge on one of these. Now, what I <laughs> tend to try to do sometimes is use my Actual things that are meant for this purpose, which are these straight edge pieces, right? This is a piece of steel that is, this actually might be aluminum, it's supposed to, I think it's steel, but anyway. Um, you have this, and you should be able to like line this up on your piece of wood and put your saw wherever it needs to be on here, and then clamp that down to the piece that you're working on. The problem is that these things, they do flex a little bit, so even when you clamp them down at both ends, it can flex a little bit depending on how thick it is. And if you have two of these, like I'm gonna need here, uh, it's definitely gonna flex and bow a little bit. And that's when you're gonna get your saw binding and you're not gonna get a straight edge and it's gonna be kind of a mess. So, since I'm using these giant heavy pieces of three quarter inch plywood, the best option is gonna be to use a big heavy three quarter inch piece of plywood <laughs> as my straight edge. Move this out of the way. Whew. And I know that this edge right here is a good straight edge. This is a good clean straight edge right now. I've checked that with my straight edge and I know. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to pull it off of the other couple sheets that I've got because that way it'll give me separation between it and the ground. And I've got this uh, scrap piece of wood here I'm gonna put under there to use as basically just to hold it up. 
give you an idea of that again. So I don't think you saw that, in case you didn't. Got this piece of scrap wood that I made for a, a table leg at some point. Just put that right under there. So I've got my mark right here, and I'm going to get my saw lined up with it. Make sure my blade's there. And I'm going to do kind of a plunge cut. Plunge cut there. And uh, follow it through a little bit so I can make sure I have enough room. And then I'm going to take my board and I'm going to slide it over. sure that my saw is in fact on a straight level here. Make sure it's square with the piece that I'm cutting. And I'm going to take my board and get it right up under there. Make sure everything's square. And once I've got a good Square mark. I'm going to take a clamp and I'm going to clamp it down. Whew. So hot out here. So freaking hot out here. Should I use the quick clamp? I do want to give it a little bit of play. I don't want to tighten all the way yet. I still got to get this other side square and straightened out. But essentially, I'm going to get this so that this part is square, which it is. Then I'm going to take my other clamp and clamp the other side. All right, so I'm going to come over on this side, do the same thing, and get my clamp released a bit. yourself enough room for your saw to get through. If you do find that your saw is uh, stuck, you can always kind of do this the opposite way. It's probably the best way to do it. Okay, this is a fairly decent angle for you to see me cut this whole board. So, uh, here we go. Alright. Oh, there we go. Got it cut. It's pretty much, uh, pretty square into it. You will end up with a little bit of a, a bevel if you don't have it held up all the way on the end. But that's okay. It's not a big deal. Oops. All right. So the next thing you want to do is take this, and now this is going to be your guide, or I guess we'll say template, I guess, what can you say? Uh, we'll use this as a template to draw the next piece and the next piece, because we're going to need three of these in order to make the, uh, the sides and the top and the bottom walls of the particular coffin. I think the guy called it a casket when he asked me to make it. 
I was like, what is this? What are you going to use the Undertaker? And good idea to go ahead and, and uh, while you've done, once you've done this first cut, make sure that this is suitable for what you're going for. If this is too small, then you know you've only cut one side, right? If this is too small for you, then you make it bigger for the next one, <laughs> and just throw this piece out, kind of, or maybe use it for scraps later on. Um, me looking at this right now, I'm thinking this might be, I could probably go an inch taller, so 16 and a half on the next one. So that's what I'll probably do. I'll probably go 16 and a half on this next one. And I'll just kind of use this one as a straight edge because, yeah, you know what? I've used it, so there we go. Now, you might be wondering, how am I going to make up for this? Well, that's why I bought that extra sheet of plywood that I screwed up, and I have some extra left over. So, another quick tip. Always have extra material. Whew. So, I'll make my marks again. But, here's what I'm going to do a little bit different than last time, because, like I said, do things that are smarter. So, what I know is I'm going to have to measure from the edge of my blade to the other side of this, uh, to the other side of this guide here, and that will give me the distance I need to add to my measurement in order to get what I want. So 15 and 7 sixteenths. So I add 15 or uh, 5 and 7 sixteenths. If I have 5 and 7 sixteenths, to my measurement that I'm going for, then I can just put my board right on that. And that, that's kind of what I was planning on doing before, but I didn't know how to do it because I'm kind of dumb. So five and seven sixteenths, <laughs> measured a third time. Nope, four and seven sixteenths. Same display measure several times. So what I'm gonna do this time is gonna be different and easier. That's why I did it wrong the first time, is to show you how much easier it is when you do it right. So I'm gonna add four and seven sixteenths to the actual measurement that I have on here. And that is going to give me what I need to do the thing that I'm trying to do. Okay, so since I know I want these to be 16 inches, what I'll need is my pencil, which I have definitely put down somewhere and I need to find so that I can mark things. I got my required 16 inches. Anything more is just a little bit of bonus that I can take off. Yep, I got 16 and a quarter here. And on my other piece, I should have probably about 16 and a 16 and an eighth or something like that. And eight to sixteenth and and two sixteenths or uh, three sixteenths in some places. So depending on where it's at, because I'll tell you, I have the hardest time even with that sort of a tool um, get, getting a perfectly straight cut. There are tools for that. There's a Craig jig tool that you can get for that, but oh, I'm too lazy to get that thing. Probably should though, because it make this a lot easier. All right. Now with that done, last thing I'm really gonna do is we're gonna get all these pieces the same height, or same length, width. Same width, that. All right, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna stack all three of them up on each other, and I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna basically cut along the side there with my saw. I'm gonna go down to the width I need, basically plunge down on the side that I know is straight, and then I'm going to Cut, along, cut off all the excess, essentially, that's all I'm gonna do. 
and I'm going to adjust my saw so that I can get through first the, the uh, first piece and then I'm going to adjust it so I can get through the third piece. Right. But I'm going to use essentially the edge the edge of this board as a guide for my saw. So here we go. Oh man, well it turns out my blade is not quite long enough <laughs> to cut through this like I wanted. So, I have another handy trick, <laughs> which is called flipping the boards over. <laughs> yeah, I didn't manage to make it all the way through. I need, in fact, a longer than a six and a half inch blade to cut all the way through here. Oh, lesson learned. So, I'm going to, real quick, oh, flip my clamps around. Flip my clamps one at a time. Give you an action shot because I'll come at you with the saw this time. It'll be great. It's fine. <laughs> I can fix this. <laughs> okay. Let's make sure I've got enough left. <laughs> I think I do. Do I have at least 15 inches? No, I don't. Ah! All right. Luckily, I'm still okay, but oh, oh man, I keep screwing this up. <laughs> okay, well, how much do I got now? somehow have enough wood. <laughs> okay, so uh, I did this to prove a point. One is that I am really, really hasty. Two is make sure you buy extra stock. Okay, so <laughs> I'm actually going to look at this piece I've got over here and see how long I made it or how wide I made it. Oh, it's 15 and a quarter, good. So, 
So, okay. Uh, oh, man. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Because, you know what? I just... I just aren't... I'm just not that good at, at things. <laughs> I'm going to do this completely different. I'm not going to do it scientific at all. I'm going to do this in a brilliant way. And you're going to see. You're going to see. So I'm going to take, take a break. I'm going to get a drink first. Because, uh, you know what? I need, I need a drink. I've got two sheets here. I've got another sheet over here. Okay, I've got this sheet over here. I can make a top and a bottom with two sheets. If I cut this into three pieces, this last board, I can have the front and the sides that I wanted. But, I have to not be stupid. <laughs> and that's gonna be real hard. <laughs> so, I'm basically gonna freehand it. I'm gonna freehand it with a, with a line that I'm gonna draw with a straight edge. Because I'll tell you what, doing it without a line to guide you, it's a terrible idea. So I'm gonna get a drink and I'll be back and then we'll start again. Okay, so I've got my board ready again. I've got some nice thick black lines at 15 inches that I know are straight square black lines. And you know what? I'm gonna do what I should have done in the first place, which is just cut based on those lines. And fix it later if it's a little bit off. Oh, I wish I had done this to begin with. There, I did it. <laughs> Came out a whole hell of a lot better than the other ones did. And you know what? It's 15 inches. It's 15 inches and I don't have to do anything else about it. Alright, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with the other one that I made. And that's how I'm gonna it. Using my clamps as kind of uh makeshift, a makeshift sawhorse platform type thing. Which is actually working pretty well. Ooh. Clue what I'm doing. I'm gonna. 
turn this over a little bit so you can see that this is in fact thick enough for me to get inside. Oh, here you go. My feet definitely have plenty of room in there. And in fact, this is actually a better height anyway. So, this is all done. I might just fucking sleep in here. Oh, uh, language. Okay. Now, what I need to do now, this is where it gets kind of weird, a little bit tricky. And it's important, the orientation where I'm cutting this. Because if I cut this, if I cut the angle in the wrong spot here, it's going to end up way shorter than it needs to be. All right? And I know this needs to be a 35 degree angle. There's two ways I can do that. Well, there's two ways that I can get the angle I'm looking for anyway. Also, fun fact, it's a good idea when you're cutting angles that you don't adjust the saw until the angle that you're mating it with has been cut as well. It's, you know, particularly if you're measuring them, if you're dividing the angle by two, like I'm doing. So, the way I want this angle to be, I want the board to essentially, it's a good idea to hold the board up and make sure that you understand what you're, how you're cutting the angle. So, if I want the board, if I want the angle to go this way, which I do, I need my saw to be going the, the way that it's going right now. If it was going the other way, then I would get the opposite angle. So, again, important to check what you're doing and always, always, always get the right angles. Take your time and do it right. I'm going to put a few things under here to catch it, make it so it doesn't fall down. And give me a more solid space to work on. And when you're cutting this, it's a good idea to not only well, give myself a point of reference here, so let me get out my straight edge. That'll work. And the pencil right there. And I'm just going to give myself a good straight line. Cut along, I need my square. Always draw reference lines because reference lines will tell you if you are way screwed up. slightly longer than slightly short. <laughs> so I've got my piece here and I'm just gonna align this angle how I want it to be. And I've got that angle where I want it to be. And now I'm going to take the opposite piece that I've got right here. The cool thing about what I've just done is I've created the same angle twice. So I'm going to flip this and put it on there and it's going to match up just like I want in theory. possible. It's the same cut, yeah? Oh, same cut. Or did I do it like that? I have low... Oh, never mind. I know what I'm doing. I don't have it lined up with this one. Huh. If I want 
those to match up. I have to do it like I drew it. the way I expected it to be. Eh, not quite. I think I'm about to have to make lemons out of lemonade. Or a lemonade out of lemons. Because this angle didn't work out the way I expected it would at all. But you know what? I'm actually kind of okay with that. That actually, uh, that will actually kind of work. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live with it. Yeah. Okay. So. What I'm going to do at this point is uh, screw these together, glue them, screw them together. First I'm going to screw them together just so I have a, a solid joint and then I'll come back and put glue on it with the screws because that'll be the easiest way to do it. Oh man. Make sure I've got this lined up though because Yeah, because that's actually not bad. You know what? I kind of like that shape better too. Because that still gives me the... Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, I'm okay with this. This is good. Sometimes plans don't always work out the way you want them to. That's why I'm laying a half a built coffin right now. And that's fine, because I'm okay with it. All right. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and screw these together. And then uh, I can do the other side the exact same way. And then, uh, then I just need to figure out the angles to get the two joints together. Yeah? Okay, we'll do it that way. Sometimes you draw things out, and you do your best, and you try to make it perfect, and you know what? Happy little accidents. We're going Bob Ross on this stuff today. I don't even care. Happy little accident. That's what it is. I tried to make a cloud, and I got a coffin. All right. Woo! It's a lot of work <laughs> building that first side. This would be a lot easier if I had just done what I was going to do to begin with, which was just draw a line and then follow the line because that's, that's the way I do things. Um, I wanted to be fancy and use like a straight edge and try to go along it. It doesn't work that well for me, I gotta be honest with you. So, tell you what, just do what I did and you'll probably be fine. And uh, as far as the angles go, as much work as I put in to try and get the angles perfect, again, they weren't, they weren't the way I expected them to work. Not at all. Uh, I have to actually probably remeasure that angle and see why I screwed that up. But, you know what? I'm fine with it for right now. So, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> and, uh, oh, a couple new announcements. Uh, I have a new Discord channel that I'm working on. Link will be in the description. Uh, I also have, uh, uh, what's the thing, a Twitter. So check me out on Twitter. Follow me there, because, you know, I post a lot of, I don't post that much on there. I mostly just get into arguments with people about stupid things. Um, but yeah, the Discord channel uh, is good. It just started up, so there's not a whole lot going on. But feel free to be the first or next to post in there. Um, sometimes I'll probably jump in there if I see people and I want to talk, and uh, we can talk. Maybe I'll do some live stuff from there. Um, but yeah, that's it. So until next time, uh, you know, keep doing the easy way like I do, and uh, try not to die. <laughs>